Operations Editor-at-Large, Michelle O'Gunderhin, headed to the Suffolk coast to see Flint's. It's home to Professor of Medicine Andrew Peacock and his artist wife, Gila. They downsized from a period house in Glasgow to build this pared-back single-story home. It's made up of three separate buildings, enclosing a beautiful outdoor space, a central courtyard. Wow. This is really the main room of the house. The largest of the three brand new buildings contains an open plan kitchen, dining and living room, a master bedroom suite, second bedroom and rear snug. The two other buildings are an artist's studio for Gila and alongside the garage a study for Andrew, but both could double as bedrooms should family arrive en masse. The courtyard layout comes from Gila's childhood. I was born in Iran and the traditional Iranian house would have a water basin as its centre and rooms all around the water basin. And then something there. is immediately occurring yeah. to me. You've got all these wonderful lines yeah. that must have taken someone an absolute age yes. to get straight, but your, your pool yeah. is not centred. It's really it's important that it's not. The whole concept of symmetry. While Persian geometry influences the yard, inside is more autobiographical, a minimal canvas of predominantly white walls and clean lines, but furnished with a hodgepodge of their old furniture and Chila's art collection. The RIBA judges noticed that while Flint's appears relatively simple, it hides several intriguing surprises. Oh my Secret goodness, chamber. look at that. Wow, oh, it's like a, you've made a little jewel box yes. inside your house. And the other special thing about this particular room is, of course, it's raised level. Axel thought of that. His idea was that you could sit here and join in with whatever was going on in the living room. What have we here? Well, this was Axel's idea, that we actually use the bath to separate the bathroom from the bedroom. And suddenly your bedroom is bigger and both the bathroom is bigger. Yeah, it's really like it. I love it. One strong and unifying approach here involves the cladding materials on the buildings. Gila wanted locally sourced flint, which their builders had to learn to work with. The timber, inspired by local black barns, is large, but every piece here was laboriously burnt using a traditional Japanese technique. This simple improvement to a material sort of represents the entire building, a composed and improved environment for Andrew and Gila. It has worked out to be a dream. I think it is really lovely. And it works, which I, I sort of slightly expected it to look very nice. I wasn't really expecting it to work. That's great. Yes, it hasn't changed our life, but it's enriched our life. This house has got all these clever little bespoke touches. It mixes old and new. It's got some of the traditional and some of the exotic. But more than anything else, it's a real celebration of the power of love trust and the possibilities of architecture. There are already six homes on the shortlist, with just one more place up for grabs. Soon we'll find out who'll be claiming it. We're travelling the length and breadth of the country to find this year's finest house in the UK. And our final clutch of superhomes are those deliberately designed to be minimal and naked, with no hint of ornament, twiddle, or decoration, which makes the location of our next project very unusual. At the end of this time-forgotten street, Whole House is a small two-story home, one above ground and a basement below. Built on a 70 square meter scrap of land and hemmed in by neighbors, there could be no outward facing windows. A fact overcome by an internal glazed courtyard and roof lights to bring light in from above. Filling the entire plot, it packs in an open plan kitchen and living space, bedroom and bathroom around the single central courtyard. 
Digging out the basement provided another bedroom, bathroom and utility space. It's radically different from its richly decorated neighbours. All you can see is a single bare wall and gate, where I met the owner and the architect. Ben, you are? Uh, I'm Nick Hayhurst, yeah, the you... architect. And? Ben Kendall. Ben? Yeah. Owner? Owner, yeah, that's right. This is a house of solutions, the greatest of which was getting light into a home with no windows. This is interesting. I mean that in a nice way, Nick. <laughs> this is not what I expected. There's a hugely generous courtyard in the middle of the building. Well, this is, this is how we get all the light into this building. We've basically wrapped the circulation all the way around the courtyard, which is also this part of this idea about making the house feel as large as possible. I, I like the fact that because, because it tapers, every staircase tapers, it actually looks three times as long as it really is. Uh, it, it's part of this whole idea about making a very small site feel large and the false perspectives. There, there have been people doing this for a long time. This isn't original. <laughs> the layout of winding walkways around the mini courtyard suggests a Roman atrium or monastic precinct. But one of Nick's more modern conjuring tricks is to place a skylight in each corner of the house. This is large and light and airy. Yeah. Above the kitchen and the lounge, they draw the eye upwards, which only increases the illusion of space. Beautiful, beautiful. With no outward facing windows, all the glass has been made to work that little bit harder. For a building with so few right angles, it's extraordinarily efficient. The RIBA judges were impressed by the perfectly executed detailing, following the minimalist mantra of less is more. There are no skirting boards or architraves here, just clean line storage, which continues right down to the basement lit from above through glass insets in the courtyard floor, an idea borrowed from Georgian pavements. Plenty of precedent, though it wasn't easy to build. The judges respected that, feeling that Whole House is an exceptional place to live, using great design skill to overcome the extreme constraints of the site. It's an object lesson in conjuring a lot from a little, light from nowhere, and beauty from a hole in the ground. You know, for a small modern house, this, this building actually contains a lot of big historical references uh, from the architecture of Roman villas, medieval cloisters, uh, even the Georgian townhouse. But then, you see, as Wilson Misner, the American playwright, wrote, uh, to pinch one idea is plagiarism. To pinch two is research. And actually, in the case of this place, to pinch dozens and whisk them into one beautiful, coherent whole is genius.